Uh, but to kick off uh, our primary movie talk, uh, we're going to kick off. i um, hoping to offer my own horrible outsider perspective because I've not actually experienced this franchise, unfortunately, but I will. Uh, we have the officially new Tron film that's in development. And I'm sure many Tron fans are very happy, um, whether or not they're happy about the following. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't care. I, I like the guy. Yeah, this is perplexing to me. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, so, wait, we pop. You haven't seen Legacy? I, no, I haven't seen either Tron films. Sir. Oh, interesting. I know. Wow. I, just, I, I, I have Disney Plus, so I should just. I'm going to say it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, like both of them are. So I definitely get to check out. But yes, they uh, this new film called Tron Ares, uh, starring, Jared, starring Jared Leto, which is interesting. I didn't know his capacity of the role until it was officially confirmed. So this will be quite the interesting run. Uh, I believe also from the same director that directed Lion. Yes. Um, Gar- strange Garth movie, Davis. But... Yeah. Which I, I haven't seen Lion either. Wow. Uh, Great movie. Fantastic. Was it Best Picture nominated? I think it was. I don't, I don't remember. 16, right? So, that that's was, what I remember hearing it from. I think it did sneak in. I'm pretty sure it, it did. In. I think it was like one of those yeah. like bottom nine or ten that just... Yeah, it, I think it got announced like eighth or ninth at the... Yeah. Is that one of the films with Deb Patel? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. From Avatar to Last Year. <laughs> <laughs> the- <laughs> Sorry. I love can we talk about that that, that clip that surfaced the other week of Dev Patel oh. at the, the red carpet premiere of the Avatar and he's like ass. <laughs> like Yeah, he's like Don't he literally apologizes to the fans as he's signing up. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so Did he really? I didn't see that. Yeah, it's a it's a short clip. He's like, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. But anyways, back to the Tron stuff. I'm. It's like perplexing that. So this seemingly confirms that it's probably going to be a completely different idea than you know continuity wise of going through with Tron three. I would think. That's what it um, seems like. Uh, I'm reading the report right here, and it really does kind of clarify that he wants to go into a different and fresh and new direction. Um. Which is cool for me. Like I'm not a huge Tron fan. I never saw the original Tron film. The uh, I guess it's yeah, the 80s I one, right? yeah, it's eighty uh, seven. Yeah, late eighties, I think. Fake fans. No, okay. I know, right? Yeah, somebody in the comments. Oh my gosh, no. When was <laughs> Legacy was like 2010? 2010? I feel like I saw it in theaters for some. Two thousand nine. Like I kind of remember seeing it in theaters. Tron Legacy uh, was twenty ten. Yeah. Yeah, well, because it was the same year as Inception. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Damn. that was a good year, huh? Yeah, and Social Network 2010 Social Network, everything, yeah, and Social Network, yeah, better than probably both of those speech. movies. <laughs> but I don't know, I, I think it's it has good potential casting. I just I don't know, it depends how they write the character. If it's kind of like, uh, I guess the only really example I can use is his character in Blade Runner, where very much stoic kind of grumpy you know kind of that's what i used uh, for one though yeah right and so i i i wonder if they're gonna write are they gonna write the character for jared leto or are they gonna write the character and jared leto is gonna play it if that makes any Mm. sense that makes a lot of sense i see what you're saying like a lot of people were complaining about this and i was kind of perplexed because i'm like did jared leto have some bad comments in the past i don't know about or anything i think everyone's i think everyone's just continuously hung up on suicide yeah everyone that's exactly it nathan i'm like okay so he's a pretty cool guy in real life i mean uh i like 30 seconds to mars (laughs) but i'm like um like his acting his acting really good do people forget that he's an oscar winner like he won for dallas buyers club for best supporting actor yeah i think 2008 i think whatever but um so he's an oscar nominated actor and i always say this i'm like somebody please tell me who's the lead actor in tron legacy where has he been nobody can remember nobody cares it's garrett headland and he hasn't been in jack crap besides tron legacy like let me see yeah he hasn't been in anything really he he was in pan troy triple frontier brothers he was in triple frontier i don't even remember him being in triple frontier i don't remember him either Maybe he died. Supposedly. Was he one of the Affleck's kids or something? He was an <laughs> Aragon. Oh, I forgot about that, too. Oh, wow. But, um, God. Yeah. yeah. I, he's not a good leading actor. But going into Garrett, uh, going into Jared Leto, though, um, specifically for Blade Runner 2049, Denis has a great 
he's a great director in general, but he really knows how to get the best out of his actors. Like he hired Dave Bautista and he's not the best actor, but if you put him he in was great. Time, in exactly. For his roles, yeah. For his role, he was fantastic. Same thing like in, I don't love this movie, but uh, what was that latest uh, James Bond movie called? Uh, Spectre. Spectre. Dave Bautista oh, yeah. was in that too because he's playing like that intimidating action-like figure. Um, yeah. And same thing for Jared Leto in Blade Runner 2049. He kind of plays like this stoic, um, intimidating character with a lot of great dialogue. I love his character in that movie. I love um, his story um, on set for Blade Runner where he like ha he has the contacts and he can't see. And he's just like, I didn't see Harrison Ford the entire time we shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Isn't he supposed to be blind in that movie kind of in a way? I think like, so because he ha he has like these uh like camera orbs that circle him. Yeah, yeah. He's a so fascinating cool. character. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so yeah, he kind of played to his strengths there in 2049, which I I don't think a lot of people saw. Well, it did kind of bomb at the box office. I went opening night. <laughs> Me too. <Same>. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, to your point though, I think he'll be a protagonist in this movie. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it'll like be the primary focus, really. And I don't think he's ever been a protagonist in a lot of. I can't. Right. I don't know a lot of his filmography, but Dallas Buyers Club, he's a supporting actor. Morbius, Suicide Squad, supporting actor. Yeah, and Morbius uh, will be what, like an anti-hero. Oh, you're right, anything. Morbius. Yeah, still the lead. I, I I don't really know the character very well, but yeah, and it's gonna be hard to judge his acting because like we have Tom Hardy and Venom, and that's not a right. good yeah. showcase either. So but I kind of see like that's. Yeah, Tom Hardy is a way better actor than Jared Leto. And you can kind of get the comedy from Tom Hardy's performance in Venom. Yeah. But Jared Leto looks to be taking it very much more seriously, at least from the trailers. Yeah. Um, Which so I, I like. Know. I like that too. I don't know how that's going to portray in a yeah. film that doesn't look so good, but we'll see. Like, yeah, this is going to be a good test for Jared Leto. I don't think he's a uh, box office draw. I don't think he's a great leading man, but I think he has great acting yeah. potential. So I'm excited to see what he can do. You know what? Now I'm thinking. Honestly, I'm more fascinated by the directing choice mm. because I don't think he comes from a sci-fi background. No. Because Lion is very much a pretty straightforward drama, um, uh, kind of generational drama. Um, and fun f I think Greg Frazier shot that movie. If I'm... You're correct. I, I, so, what, if Greg Frazier shoots a Tron movie... Can you? That is like he goes from Star Wars to Dune to the Batman to a Tron movie. If in Amazing. fact, they're not like oh, because he did Rogue One, right? Yeah, he did Rogue One. What a repertoire! <laughs> so that would be incredible. I would love to see Greg Frazier shoot a Tron movie, and he I would, I would imagine, oh, I would man. imagine if you're the Lion director, you're saying, "Hey, uh, Greg Frazier shooting a Tron movie? Yes, please." And if you're Disney, um, you're like absolutely. Um, you know, we've already worked with this guy, uh, before, and and I, I'm curious to see if I don't know if it, any of the stories mentioned who's writing or if the director is getting a co-writing or what the Ooh. script is going to be like. Let but it'll be interesting that. to see how this the rest of the crew fills out. So for me, I'm cautiously optimistic to you know pretty optimistic because. We don't really know how the rest of the crew is going to fill out, but I think, I, you know, once we get more supporting cast and kind of find out some plot details, then I think I'm going to have more of a judgment on like, okay, this is kind of worth it to do a another movie versus, um, you know, making a Disney Plus series like, kind of been uh, over the past two years or so, people were like, oh, what if Tron was a series? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting here. I was reading the article and it says here that Davis aggressively pursued the job, eventually winning over the Disney execs because they're saying like he comes from a very small background. Of course, we just said Lion. So I guess he's very passionate about this. That's always a great thing. Wow. Um, like it doesn't look like Disney just picked him out, which is kind of surprising because they usually do pick out smaller directors. You have Gareth yeah. Evans in Rogue One. MCU does it all the time. They just did it for Captain Marvel 2. Um, so it's going to be interesting. No. Good vibes. Good Thanks, vibes man. to you. Thanks, man. It must have been one hell of a pitch then. Like Exactly. Yeah. I'm curious. You know, we always thought Disney would bring this franchise back. It's it's I think it's too bankable of a franchise, even though I think Tron Legacy made less money than people thought it was gonna make. It still made what, like six hundred million or five uh, I want to say four hundred. 
in remember. 3D. In 3D. I remember. Uh, I, I'll, like, I'll never forget night. seeing that movie in theaters. I was so pissed because I paid like what? You had to pay an extra three dollars to see something in 3D, and it was yeah. like ten bucks. I'm like ten bucks for a Tron movie, okay? okay. <laughs> and then I get there, and before the movie starts, it says, "Now for a warning, three f- or a quarter of this movie won't be in 3D, or certain sections of this movie won't be in 3D." So they I'm didn't like, transfer all of it. No, oh, which is crazy. Wow. Yeah. The first. I know it's like early on in like the new era of 3d but geez exactly so right i'm like my friends and i were like did we just pay an extra three bucks for a movie that's not fully 3d and so uh you had to like take the glasses off? Price for, like, exactly carson like, like so certain scenes like so like we have to take the glasses off then when they get into the tron world put it back on when they're racing you put it back on and off and it's really weird i hated the experience i had a awful. similar i kind of <laughs> had like i had a wonky thing happen to me uh 3D story. Uh, I went. I think I went to go see the first Fantastic Beast. It was about like a month after it uh, initially released. So I was finally gonna go see it. And like we were seeing a 3D showing, and uh, I, I sit down. I put on my glasses, and like everything looks so wonky and weird. And I'm like, while the trailers are going, I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I'm like, I go to take off my glasses. Maybe like there's a smudge or something. I try to wipe it off, and I realize I'm missing an entire lens from my glasses. <laughs> I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> oh my god. I was like, That's oh, crazy. My, my eyes were glitching. Like, ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, oh, yeah 3D. I, I, I'm excited to see it. Like, even in Tron Legacy, a lot of the CGI was not good because that was, there was during that early days of trying to uh, get that younger actor thing. Wasn't there like a younger Jeff Bridges? I in think that that's, movie? yeah. It was like yeah. I think it was the first real instance of it being used prominently. Yeah, and it was really bad. <laughs> it was like rubbery. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, God. it was so rubbery. Like, you got to find the key or whatever it is. I'm like, what is going on? You know on? what? That aside, that movie is has gorgeous production design and lighting. Totally. And yeah, actually, when, it, when it is practical stuff, it kind of blends in. I yeah, love I do, all I this. Do, I do kind of want to touch on that. Just from, like, the assemblies of clips I've seen from uh, both Trons. It's interesting because the uh, first ever Tron film, like, you look back on it and, you know, effects, like, yeah, dated. But it's still interesting. Um I noticed like a lot of the actors like in the Tron world are like super like muted gray. Um, and I was like, Oh, that's odd. But then I also kind of noticed they kind of have that style in Tron legacy as well, but it's like done like way better in terms of like the neon lighting. I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. that's actually really interesting. Um, but yeah, like the whole like ideal of like the neon fast paced moving world of Tron, uh, which I haven't like overly deep dived into to actually look at. Um, but from what I have seen, like, it's really cool. I'm not only intrigued to like check that out finally, but to see like an assemblance of what could be achieved today of such effects. Definitely. And it goes back to the conversation we we're having about Tarkin showing up in, uh, Cassian, right. Of like, yeah. even the jump from 2016 from Tarkin and Rogue One, like we're talking about, you know, already so much just in the star Wars kind of television realm has, has propelled forward in terms of visual effects and all that stuff so yeah. i mean it's already been 10 years since tron legacy like that's a whole decade like and we'll probably get this movie 2023 at the earliest i'm thinking at the earliest 22 23 yeah that's what i'm thinking right now I, I i would put this movie if if avatar 2 wasn't in december 2022 i'd be like all right let's let's shoot for a that's a great December, December movie. December yeah. 2022 date, but I'm like, there's no way they're going to put it. Do you guys you know, remember the exact date for Tron Legacy? Because uh, I forget what month that came out. And... Oh, Why December I... 17th, 2010. Wow. Did it really? Wow. Yeah, so that was a December movie, which I think is the right spot for it, but right now they kind yeah. of screwed themselves over because they have back-to-back Avatar and Star Wars for the next decade. Right. Um, wow. So yeah, and this, so... this can't be a summer movie. That's too no. dangerous. Maybe um, they drop this in like fall, October. Yeah, October twenty twenty three, October September in that kind of yeah. area. Um, the summer just too big for the Batman's next year in the fall, and I think that's going to be obviously a huge hit for a fall. And then the following year, I don't think any. I can't remember if there's a Marvel movie in November. Or for October for 2021 or 2022? 2022. No, I think everything that was like all Trump July in the beginning of the year. Yeah. There's Spider Verse 2 early October right. oh, 2022. Yes, there's Spider Verse. That's the other comic book. And of course, there's Aquaman 2 that December. Yeah. They're so both in I, December? I, no, Spider Verse is 
October, October. October. Yeah. and then Aquaman oh, two oh, is December. Right. Oh, Wait, didn't they? Avatar didn't their too. first films come out like both in December twenty eighteen? Ooh. What did, what did you say? No, like, Spider Verse came out like three. Didn't Spider Verse come out end of November? No, it was December fourteenth. Really? Like, yeah. Okay. Early December. I think I caught like an early access end of November, but it yeah, December. Yeah, that's crazy. It'll be interesting though where they put it. Yeah, and I, the first thing I tweeted out when this news broke was that I'm surprised this wasn't a Disney Plus series. I thought for the longest time, because the whole back and forth for the past ten years about a new Tron project in general. I thought like, okay, we're going to get a Tron TV series, especially with the success right. of the Mandalorian. We're getting a new Percy Jackson stuff. So yeah. you can take a lot of creative risks on Disney plus as a series. Cause yeah. you get the longer form storytelling. And with maybe, they, maybe this pitch is just that good. Like it seems like they're pretty confident with, even if we haven't heard anything exactly. for years about Tron, maybe it's finally, you know, someone walked up into the room and just say, Hey, this is what I want to do. And they're like, this is it. So we mm -hmm. want to go forward with which is exciting super exciting yeah disney loves their franchises we could see a lot of things coming from this definitely yep so <laughs> um i think it about wraps the tron so because i really don't have much more to offer <laughs> but um what was your favorite part of tron legacy nathan <laughs> rubber face no <laughs> <laughs> um no, but yeah, definitely. I'm excited to see where things go. Um, I do like Jared Leto, so I'm excited to see what he's got going on. Um, dude seems really fun on Snapchat. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's still so crazy. Like I saw him post like set photos of Morbius on the Snapchat, and I guess nobody <laughs> engaged on that or screenshot anything. <laughs> and it just, it just, it's in the absence of time. Nobody has it. I'm just like, what the hell? It's too funny. Because <laughs> you know, like if any character or actor from the MCU, like. Tweets out or do, that. Yeah, do an Instagram post. Everybody like, oh, do you guys see that in the background or whatever? But for Morbius, like, I don't care. It's it's Morbius. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jared Leto's on his like island cult. Not really. But... <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he was. Yeah, he, he was, was, there, was just what? like I saw him just hanging out on an island of just like a bunch of fans. So he like, didn't know coronavirus was a thing until he came back like three weeks after it. I think it was almost whatever. a year ago at that point. But uh... <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's nuts. Oh, but yeah, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to dive into Tron itself, get all the knowledge.